All right, so the first one is kind of like a plug-in expression. So it's telling me that X is 100. All right, and we want to know which one's the smallest. So I'd really have to just go through, and instead of X, I'd put in 100. So the first one would end up being 1 over 100. Uh, for B, the second one would be 10 over 100. All right, for C, I would do 1 minus 100. All right, remember, I do add the opposite for this one. This is going to end up being a negative 99. And then for D, I do 10 minus 100. Again, if I did add the opposite for this, and I want to subtract them because they're different, this would be, take the bigger sign, this would be negative 90. So the smallest would be C, which is this negative 99. All right, so that's for the first one. Second one is a probability question. Um, so again, you could do a tree diagram for this one. It says the cafeteria staff made sandwiches. Each sandwich was made on either rye or white bread. So I would do R, W. All right, ham or turkey. So then I can do H and T, H and T. All right, and then they could either have cheese or no cheese. So I guess you could do cheese, no cheese, cheese, no cheese, cheese, no cheese for all of these. And then it says, without looking, what's the chances that Mary will get a sandwich with cheese? All right, so remember, you can count the bottom row, see how many total outcomes there are. If I count all those, there is out of eight. Okay, there's eight total outcomes. All right, and then one, two, three, four of them have cheese. So that's four out of 12, or excuse me, four out of eight, which is really the same thing as one half. All right, and I know you can do it another way, but tree diagram is helpful just to kind of have a visual for that one. All right, so that's the first two. All right, the next one, and this is kind of what I assigned is on unit rates. All right, so usually when you're doing unit rates, you just want to divide. All right, so in this problem, we have a five pound bag of apples cost 450. All right, and so I want to know the unit price, so I do 450 divided by five. All right, and then the eight pound bag here costs 752. So I want to divide that. And then they want to know the difference in unit prices. So I obviously have to figure out both of them. All right, five does not go into four here. So I put a zero. All right, five goes into 45 nine times. Okay, that'd be 45. All right, then I just get a zero. So really that's 90 cents. So that means for every pound, it's 90 cents. That's the unit rate for the first one. And then the eight pound bag, and it doesn't go into seven. Eight goes into 75 nine times. That's 72. 75 minus 72 is three. And then bring down my two. So now I have 32. Eight goes into 32 four times. All right, so we have 90 cents and 94 cents. So the difference between those would be four cents. So my answer would be A. All right, so again, for unit rates, usually you just want to divide if it's this one was, you know, the cost per bag. So we take the cost and divide it by or how many pounds the bag was. All right, so again, or Y divided by X. All right, that's what we do for unit rates. All right, number four, we haven't gone over this this year, but again, this is something that you should have done in sixth grade. It's talking about um, the median score, right? Which one is basically higher? Remember that for the median, I want to order them from least to greatest, and they don't do that in this table. So I'd kind of want to redo that. All right, I think there's two 80s, and there's like two 90s and 100. All right, so my median just means my middle number. All right, so in this case, we have one, two, three, four, uh, 
five, six, seven. So there will be an exact middle number, which would be this one right here. So for Johnny, hers is 80. All right, and then I want to order Sally. So I got 50. I got three 70s, two 90s, and then 100. So again, this one also has seven. So the middle one would be this one right here. So Johnny's is 10 more than Sally's. So I'd go through, it says Sally's median is higher. All right, that's not the case because hers is 70. Second one says Sally's median is lower. Okay, and that would be the case because 70 is lower than 80. So that would be B for that one. All right, so just remember with median, you got to have them in order. And then the median is just the middle number. All right, and then let's do one more. All right, this one is an expression. Okay, so it's just we got to do distributed property for this one. So one half times two is just one, so one N. And then I just think about what is half of six because I got to multiply one half times six. Half of six is three. All right, so that would be D. Susan's week weekly earnings were proportional to the number of hours she worked. The table shows the number of hours Susan worked and the amount she earned. How much money did she earn per hour? So you can really take any of these. I usually just kind of do the top. And then um, we basically want to take our, our dollars per hour. So our Y divided by X again. Okay, and again, remember, usually I put the X in the first column. Um, let me put black. I don't know why it went to green. All right, so we have, we just want to take 4750 and then divide that by five. So five goes into 47 nine times. It's 45. Subtracted, I get two. Bring down my five. Um, five goes into 25 five times. All right, and then that goes in 25, which is zero. All right, and that just makes that a zero. So it's 950, so that would be C. All right, for number seven is an expression. All right, and this one's a little difficult just because of the negative. Remember that I can think of the negative as an opposite. So when the negative is on the outside of the parentheses, I basically want to take everything on the inside and make it its opposite. So I have three X. All right, we have two X in there. So the opposite of that is negative two X. And then we have four plus four. So the opposite of that would be negative or minus four. All right, let me erase this so I can get that out of the way. All right, and then we want to get all our x's together. So I have 3x and negative 2x, which makes 1x. And then I have negative 4 and positive 5. Remember, they're different signs, so we subtract and take the bigger number sign. So 5 minus 4 is 1. And since the 5 is positive, there's more leftover positives. So it would be x plus 1. So that one would be b. All right, so to the next page, and there's actually a lot of the same questions. Um, I think eight and nine are similar to the last two because we have an expression in a table. All right, again, we want to do y divided by x. And when we have this, you know, it says what equation represents this relationship. So we want to take y and divide it by x again. So again, we can start with the first one, 163.5 divided by 3. 3 goes into 16 five times. 5 times 3 is 15. Subtract 16 minus 15, I get 1. I want to bring down my 3. 3 goes into 13 four times. Hey. That's 12. Nice. I'm doing a video, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's awesome, though. All right, and that's uh, 13 minus 12 is 1. And then I bring down my 5. So 3 goes into 15 five times. 
So that is 54.5x, which would be D for that one. All right, and then the next one is another expression. This one we need to do distributive property first. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then don't forget, if I do add the opposite, that is a negative x. So 2 times negative x is negative 2x. All right, and then plus negative 12, because I'm going to add the opposite with that, plus 4x. All right, so now I want to get my x's and my numbers together. So I have my x's are negative 2 and 4, which makes 2x. And then I got positive 6 and negative 12, which makes a negative 6 or minus 6. So it would be 2x minus 6, so that would be c. All right, and then we do have 2 on the next page. Um, but I'm just going to do the top one since I wanted to do 6 through 10. Um, so last one for number 10. It says Mr. Kelly pays $12,564 a year for rent. His rent is a constant amount. All right, remember with constant, again, that's y divided by x again. So it says which equation represents the amount he pays per month in M equals months and C equals total rent. So you think about there are 12 months in a year so we want to divide this by 12. All right so 12 12 goes into 12 one time okay that's zero bring down my five all right it doesn't go into five so I put a zero then I got to bring down a four uh, 12 goes into sorry that's sloppy it's a zero but one zero 12 goes into 54 four times, which is 48. I get 54 minus 48 is 6. Bring down my 6. And then 12 goes into 66. Um, wait a second. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, 12 goes into 66. What did I do wrong? This should be, why did I do seven? Did I write that down right? Should be seven. All right, so for this one, it would be, Oh, I know what I did wrong. That's a six, I was gonna say. Sorry about that. So that's a six, sorry, that's 56, that should be 86. I was gonna say that answer wasn't getting right. Then when I subtract, <laughs> oops. Then when I subtract, I get an 86, there we go, and then it goes in seven times. I was gonna say, I knew it was 1,047, but I was getting 45, so there you go, sorry about that. I, for, I got the number wrong, so that's why. Oh, and this should be a 4. So it's 84. There we go. And then, yeah, 12 times 7 is 84. Sorry. So that, I was, I knew I did something wrong. I was trying to figure it out. So it should be 1,047. All right. Now, um, it would be A because we want to take this times 12, and that would give us the cost. All right, so it'd be A, not B. So you got to be careful sometimes. You know, this is kind of looks like the same answer, but we want months because we want to times it by 12, and that will give me the 12,564.